So everyone watched the, f the very first sauna of the newly elected president, Bongbong Marcos, and it was last Monday. It was short, but it was extra meaty. And what can I, what can actually be said was he was able to answer those critics through his first State of the Nation address, the sauna. In, in general, this address um, is a yearly report of our country's status, and at the same time, it serves as a map to be followed by the current administration. And in any case, we have to consider one thing, that the Philippines is a nation under God. Hi, this is Christopher Nino Arca, and you're watching Bible in Focus, where we will talk about our experiences and human conditions in light to sacred scripture. And uh, before we proceed, we will still be um, reading the biblical text from the Christian Standard Bible 2020 text edition. All right. So, um, President Bongbong Marcos painted the picture of the Philippines during his first State of the Nation address from a uh, different perspective, one that involves faith and optimism. In saying what he said, he acknowledged the current situation of the country in a different way, <clears throat> meaning he did not stop to dwell on the mishap, but moved forward for a better Philippines. It's one leadership trait that will either make or break a leader. It is what we call sheer determination. Every system of government, every administration, will have stumbling blocks. And it's all the time. Opposition never rests. Well, not unless God says it's so. Let's take, for example, in Joshua chapter 21, verse 44, where it says, and listen to this, the Lord gave them rest on every side according to all he had sworn to their ancestors. None of their enemies were able to stand against them, for the Lord handed over all their enemies to them. And if we actually move further to the next verse, it actually says in verse 45, None of the good promises the Lord had made to the house of Israel failed. Everything was fulfilled. So, well, God asked, God asked one thing from Joshua and all Israel in return for granting them rest from all sides. And that is to be faithful to God and follow all his instructions. Do you think God would not do the same for the government, for our government, and lastly, for the nation, for our nation, if we all just follow God's precepts and instructions. The State of the Nation address could, could be also viewed as a promise, a covenant of some sort, that the government would enact for the nation. The leaders of the nation standing as a servant, or should I say a group of servants, to serve the common good of the people. One way of leading the nation lays on the table a perfectly drawn plan to be followed for a peaceful and progressive nation. Okay, so we have heard all of it. So what comes next? I mean, Realistically, what can we really expect as the next step? Well, that should be implementation. And let's all admit it. Our country is in a disarray and we need to stand up from where we fell. Economically, I cannot say currently if our country is economically sound. 
From what we heard, this new administration has plans to boost our economy. So let's just wait and see. Policies-wise, I believe the president is putting, putting it right on track. Again, let's just wait and see. What am I trying to say? Let's open our, our, our Bible in the Gospel of Matthew. That's Matthew 5. That's Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 to 37. Again, you have heard that it was said to our ancestors, You must not break your oath, but you must keep your oaths to the Lord. But I tell you, don't take an oath at all, either by heaven, because it's God's throne, or by the earth, because it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, because it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, because you cannot make a single hair white or black. But let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more than this is from the evil one. So what does this actually mean? You are basically accountable for every word that you speak, for every vow or promise that you actually make. If you say something, if you actually make a promise, you better mean it. If we um, focus on verse 33 of this reading, again you have heard that it was said to our ancestors, you must not break your oath, but you must keep your oaths to the Lord. Look at here. You have to be reminded that whenever you make a promise to another, God always stands as a witness. As God sees all things, all vows made are made in His presence. How is it so? Listen to Matthew um, 18. That's Matthew 18 verses 19 to 20 where it says in verse 19 again truly I tell you if two of you on earth agree about any matter that you pray for it will be done for you by my father in heaven simply saying all right simply saying it it is like a consensus if the two of you come to an agreement you would actually approach a person of higher authority to stand as a witness and make, or should I say, this authority would hold you and the other to the promises that both of you made. This agreement would then be sealed by the higher authority. And moving on to verse 20, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there among them. Okay, so, although we see these two verses within the context of a physical gathering of worship, calling for the presence of the Lord, who is the recipient of our worship, these two verses can actually be invoked as well, seeking the presence of the Lord to be a witness for two parties making a vow. This goes back to our previous reading in, in chapter 5 of Matthew. So you would ask me what all this is about, what this is all about. Well, basically, the state of the nation address includes a vow, an oath. Because this, um, this address, this sauna, sets the expectation of the entire nation. That everything stated within this address will be kept and upheld. Now, if that is not an oath, then I don't know what is. 
in verse um, 34 to 45 of our gospel reading, these verses actually points out to the fact that uh, to not make an oath for the sake of anything. What do I mean? Why is it so? Anything on this earth and beyond belongs to no one. And the fact that behind every promise is a collateral, you basically cannot use anything as a collateral that is not actually yours. You cannot make an oath by heaven, earth, and on any city, and that may include your home. Again, let, uh, let us go back to, to chapter 5 so you could be reminded of our reading. That's Matthew chapter 5, and I will be uh, taking 34 to 35. But I tell you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, because it's God's throne, or by the earth, because it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, because it is the city of the great king. You have to bear in mind that your promise is just a set of words. It only has value if something backs up your promise. Your promise is only as good as the tangible that backs it up. Consider it this way. Our money is just a piece of paper. It only becomes a legal tender, a certificate of some sort, when there is gold in the reserves to back up that piece of paper that you have in your wallet. Now, if there is no gold to back up your money, then it becomes useless. It doesn't have any value. The same goes with the promise that you actually make. What then is our Lord talking about? You better make good on your promise because you are only as good as the words that you say. If possible, do not make promises at all. In line with this, we are bound to a certain extent due to the fact that the State of the Nation address is a public address by a government official. He binds himself to this effect that he is basically trumpeting to the nation what we expect of him to do. And, we, and if we uh, refer to Ecclesiastes, that is Ecclesiastes, uh, Chapter 5, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 5, where it says, Better that you do not vow than that you vow and not fulfill it. To this effect, each person is held on the promises they make. You can definitely hold this current government on the words proclaimed by the President during his first State of the Nation address. Like I said previously, you are only as good as the words that you speak. So when you make a promise, so when you make a promise, you should better keep it. You should better keep it. Because if you cannot, if you cannot, you should not make any promises at all. And, and if we uh, refer back to our gospel reading in chapter 5 of Matthew, all right, and now we're going to um, verse 37, where it says, But let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more than this is from the evil one. 
it is common knowledge that in politics there are as many colors as much as there is in the LGBTQ rainbow. And as much as it disgusts me, in reality, the only colors that matters is actually black and white. Anything more than this is the deception of the devil, of the evil one. Deceiving you to think that, oh, this is good. And, and then when you take that bait, bam, you're hooked. You're doomed from the start and you do not even know it. Make sure that you are transparent with the word that you say because your words, your words practically tells what you are inside. Your words are actually products of what you put inside of you. Remember what Jesus said also in Matthew, but uh, let's go to um, chapter 15 of Matthew. Matthew 15 verses 18 to 19, where it says, and listen to this, but what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart, and this defiles a person. Why? Why is it so? Listen to what Jesus says. Now in uh, verse 19, in the next verse. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, sexual immoralities, thefts, false testimonies, slander. This is perfectly within the context of what we are actually driving at. For if you plant within your heart the seed of God's words, and you water it with your faithfulness, this seed will bear fruit. And what are these fruits? Love, respect, fear of God, works of charity, endurance and actually more faith. Take care of what you put inside your heart. And just as your eyes are sets of mirrors to your soul, your mouth is the gate of your spirit. Let's bow down our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, May your words fall on good ground and may, and may it bear good fruit in our lives. You are the vine and we are the branches. Do not let us fall on the deception of the evil one. Do not let us be influenced by it. May we desire to live in the light with you. Give us the strength to endure hardships in our darkest moments be your light. In our weakest moments, be our strength. May we count every word that we speak to be an encouragement for our neighbors. May we recognize through your Spirit that our words deeply affect others. And so we pray, let us stay with you. We are your children. We are supposed to speak the words coming from you from you and you alone. Amen. Okay, so before we go, before we go, um, I would like to remind you, our uh, dear brothers and sisters, that to be very careful that although that we are already going out of the house, doing face-to-face -face meetings in some sort, uh, we would still, we would like to remind you to keep safe have those boosters and vaccines and always remember to put on your masks and lastly um, in line with this announcement um, we are also reminding you dear brothers and sisters that uh, we will be holding within the archdiocese of manila in different parishes our bible uh, bible fellowships which we call the the passover the modern pa the new passover 
So hopefully we could see you soon. Just take care and God bless.